Good morning. We greet you in our Lord's name. It's a joy to be here and to share with you once again. I'm going to share a phrase with you which you're going to hear repeated often during this message. The phrase is this. Personal spiritual renewal. Personal spiritual renewal begins at conversion and continues until Christ takes us home. For in heaven there is no sin. No longer renewal is needed. Personal spiritual renewal begins at conversion and continues, should continue, until Christ takes us home. We attended a funeral yesterday, and perhaps the name is going to be familiar to you. Denny Denny Fulmer, excuse me. Denny Fulmer went home to be with the Lord. I was Denny's pastor for a number of years, and you must know him too, at least Gina's wife, for she played at the 815 service for a long time here at Trinity. Denny taught school here in Warwick. He taught math. Maybe some of you here had him for a teacher. Anyone? Yes, Mike over there. Were you a good student, Mike? (laughs) I put him on the spot. I should not have done that. (laughs) The church at Akron was packed. Why? Because during our time with Denny, we were friends with Denny for about 49 years when he passed. Denny continued to grow and grow and grow. Many of the people there were people that Denny led to Christ personally. He was one who learned the lessons of spiritual renewal. There's a window in our study, we call it study, we call it the office, place where I do my work and Chris does her work on the computer. There's a window that looks right out to the street. Not too many weeks ago, there was a crew out there repairing the road. Why? Because over time, cracks had begun to form in the road and they were filling it with whatever material they used to do that. Now, what would have happened if they would have ignored those cracks. They were renewing the road. But what would have happened if they would ignore those cracks? The cracks would have gotten deeper and worse and worse and worse until the the road became pretty much impassable. But they were renewing the road. This past Tuesday, we flew home from Texas. We were on vacation and uh, visiting our daughter and family in Texas. Went to the airport and you're supposed to be there two hours before the plane takes off. Well, I'm a little different. I was there two and a half hours before. That's just who I am and my wife puts up with it. (laughs) But the hour came and the plane was delayed. Then it was delayed again. Then it was delayed again. And finally, we got on board. Everybody put their stuff in the overhead bins. We all had our seatbelts on, ready to back out. And the captain got on the intercom and said, everyone off the plane. Take all your stuff and get off the plane. Why? Because the plane had a flat tire. Took about an hour to repair that, another half hour to do the paperwork and another half hour to get a new crew because the former crew had timed out. The plane needed to be renewed. And those of us on board were happy for that because we didn't know what would happen if that plane would have tried to land with a flat tire. When we were first made new, When we came to Christ, Christ made us new. 1 Corinthians 5.17 tells us this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. 
Our sins were forgiven. Now we're part of the family of God. A new creation. But did that make us sinless? Anyone here sinless? Of course not. We needed to have that continual forgiveness of Christ as we've sinned in our lives. There was room for renewal. There was room for grace. There was room for growth. Spiritual renewal begins when we first receive Christ, but continues till Christ takes us home. One of my favorite comic strips is Dagwood. Do you read Dagwood in the paper? And my, fa my favorite one was Dagwood was in the bathroom and he's getting ready for the day and he's washing his face and he's shaving, he's brushing his teeth, combing his hair. And then the last frame, Dagwood says this as he looks into the mirror. Well, that's the best I can do with what I have to work with. <laughs> Is that your thought? Not appearance wise, but spiritually speaking, are you the best you can be for Christ and his gospel? Are there some cracks that need to be fixed? Are there some cracks you've been ignoring? We'll never become sinless, but our Lord certainly wants us to sin less. And sometimes Satan just tempts us to be satisfied with who we are. We'll say things like, to ourselves, we'll say things like, oh, that's just who I am. God understands. Really? Really, does he? Oh, he understands who we are, and he understands our failures, but is he okay with that? We've talked a lot about renewal here at Trinity, and I'm in favor of all of it, the, the sanctuary, the other building, parts of the building, it's all beautiful. We all look forward to what's going to be, how it's going to be used in the future and so forth and so on. But Christ also wants us to be renewed personally. Personally. And only you know the areas in your life that need to be renewed. Let's take a few moments to look at a person in Scripture who, with whom you're very familiar. It's Peter, but not only Peter, but also his disciples. And look a bit about renewal in their lives. This is a passage from Matthew chapter 26, beginning at verse 21, 31 rather. Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die for you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. The Lord's pointing out a crack. Peter, you're going to deny me. And then all the other disciples chimed in. We're with Peter. We'll never deny you. Jump ahead a few verses. Verse 52 and following. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to them, said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call on my father and he at once will put on my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then will the scriptures be fulfilled? that say it must happen in this way. At that time, Jesus said to the crowd, 
Am I leading in a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. But all the disciples deserted him and fled. Catch that last phrase? All the disciples deserted him and fled. You see, Peter boasted, and the other disciples boasted as well. We will never desert you. We will never do what the Lord said we're going, you're, we're going to do. We will not disown you. We'll die with you. But in reality, what happened? When things got tough, they deserted our Lord. How about us? Our behavior. Cracks? What are the cracks in your life? What are the cracks that perhaps you're ignoring? What are the cracks that perhaps you're simply saying, that's just who I am? When I was a kid, child, oh, maybe third grade, second grade, somewhere around there, my mother was going to the store, grocery store every week, and every week she brought home a section of a dictionary. The first week they gave out all the A's, next week all the B's, all the C's, all the D's, all the way through the dictionary. And you ended up with quite a thick book. I don't remember quite what I was doing wrong, but I was doing something that really aggravated her. And she sent me to my room. And I was angry. I threatened, I'm going to throw myself down the steps. I know you couldn't believe that about me, could you? <laughs> and she sort of ignored me. Well, I went upstairs and I got that dictionary thick thing and I threw it down the stairs and she thought it was me maybe that would have been preferable to what happened next <laughs> we all have cracks and that wasn't the only crack throughout my life believe me there are still cracks in my life that the Lord's working on how about yours? Spiritual renewal begins at conversion, but it does not stop there. It continues until Christ takes us home. What are the cracks you're trying to fill in? I hope there are some that you can recognize in your heart and mind, even right now, even as I speak. The disciples knew what their cracks were, especially at an, an occasion which happened after the resurrection. From the Gospel of John, chapter 21. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Have you ever wondered on that occasion when Jesus put Peter on the spot what the other disciples were thinking? Is he going to talk to me next? Is he going to put me on the spot next? He didn't do that. But Peter's life changed and changed dramatically. Or as Pentecost passed, Peter is preaching. And you remember the passage early in Acts. Peter is preaching the gospel, and how many? 
3,000 people came to the Lord. There was no longer, I'm not going to stand out, Peter. There was no longer a, I don't want to be noticed, Peter. There was no longer a group of denying disciples. There was at the beginning of the church of Jesus Christ. Now take note in your lives that when you try to start to, start to fill the cracks, Satan's going to oppose you. One quick illustration. Our pastor, when we were dating at the time, not engaged, was preaching from John chapter 14, the passage where I just spoke of. Feed my sheep. And at the end of the message, he gave an invitation for those who felt called to ministry. And Chris and I were sitting towards the front of the sanctuary, not where we usually sat. We didn't even look at each other. We just got up and went front together. And that began our ministry. The same week, the very same week, on a cold winter's night, I was driving back home from college, from Bloomsburg to Bethlehem. I had an older 64 Dodge, a boat. You remember those boats? Big, big car. Well, the water pump went, which meant the car overheated. On a not-so-traveled road, nobody was really on it. I drove a couple of miles, whatever it took for the car to overheat, stopped, let the car cool down, drove a few miles back and forth, all the way from Bloomsburg to Bethlehem. Already Satan was trying to discourage us. And then soon after that, my pastor, because we made that decision, said, Bob, would you preach for youth night Sunday evening? I said, sure. In my mind, I thought, how hard could this be? Foolish thought. I got this sermon prepared, and then time came for me to preach, and I was sitting in the pulpit chair behind my pastor. And I could feel the perspiration running down inside my shirt. I was desperately nervous. So nervous that I talked that fast. Seven minutes, I was done. <laughs> my dear pastor got up and walked up to the front to the pulpit, put his arm around my shoulder and said, Bob, thank you for that testimony. And he proceeded to bail me out and preach a full sermon. If you're going to fill cracks, Satan's going to oppose you. It's a guaranteed. For the last thing he wants is to see you mature in Christ. He wants to convince you that it's just the way you are. Those cracks, I mean. He wants to convince you that, oh, it doesn't make any difference. Who's going to notice? Who's going to care? Jesus notices and Jesus cares. And who knows what kind of difference you're going to make for the gospel of Jesus Christ if those cracks are filled and you become even more useful for his kingdom. If you read on through the through the New Testament, you realize how the church grew and how the Lord used those 12 disciples with, with Matthias coming on board, those disciples for the kingdom of Christ. They believed so strongly that every one of them were martyred except for John. They gave their lives for the Lord of whom they said, and behaved as if he wasn't important to them. They deserted him. And now they stand for him, willing to be martyred for the faith. 
all the renovations that have and are taking place here at Trinity are wonderful. I'm thrilled with all of them. But in reality, I hope we all understand that the most important renovation is in us. Is in us. Because we are the ones God is going to use to fill this beautiful facility that we have with people who have come to know and love the Lord. We are the ones that need continual renewal. I know I do. And I trust that you know that about yourself as well. Let me just say it one more time. Spiritual renewal begins at conversion. But it does not stop. It should not stop until Christ takes us home. Know that Satan's going to oppose you. But the phrase that I keep repeating to myself when Satan challenges me is simply from Scripture. Greater is he who is in me. Say the rest of it with me than he who is within the world. Believe that? If you believe that, then let's together fill some cracks and become even more useful for Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these men of old who deserted you but then died for you. They filled the crack. And Lord, you know in each of our lives the cracks that exist. But we want, we want the road of our usefulness to be paved smooth and useful. So Lord, I would pray that even now you would identify in all of us cracks that need to be filled. <coughs> and we need your help to fill them, Lord. Be gracious, we pray, to help us so that we may become even more useful for your cause, your kingdom, your gospel here and through the ministry of Trinity Church and in general with people who we deal with every day of our lives. We ask this in the powerful name of our Lord and it is in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs>